everyone my name is Rachel welcome or welcome back to my channel so I am back in my normal filming setup yay for that and I thought to celebrate that I would do something a little bit fun and different for my end of September reading wrap-up I'm going to be discussing the 18 books that I read in the last half of September uh, but with a little bit of a twist I got this idea from Amanda from the Naughty Librarian I'll link her channel either up in the cards or down in the description below she did a get ready with me while she did her most recent wrap-up so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna be doing my makeup while I talk about these 18 books I have gotten quite a few requests from you guys you wanted to see me incorporate me doing my makeup into my video so I thought that this would be the perfect way to do that. Yeah I have no makeup on as of this moment but that will quickly change. I have a primer on. I think what's going to be the easiest is I'm just going to list all of the products that I use down in the description as opposed to me telling you about the items in this video because that would make this video way too long. So yeah first things first let's get started with some foundation. So the first four books I'm going to talk about are the four books that I read for a reading vlog that I did reading Samantha from Books with Samantha's favorite books, top five favorite books ever. And I had so much fun filming that reading vlog and reading the books um, for that vlog. It's going to be so weird trying to talk to you guys and focus on doing my makeup because I'm like hyper focused when I do my makeup. I'm very meticulous about my makeup and how it looks and how it's blended and all of that. So it's gonna be weird, but <laughs> yeah. So that was a really fun video to film. I'll of course link that up in the cards. Um, I definitely found some new all time favorites of mine through doing that video. And I've become even closer friends with Samantha. We chat on Instagram all the time um, about the books that we're loving. And we definitely have a very similar um, reading taste, which is fun. So the first book that I read for that, let's see, I have it next to me, is Again the Magic by Lisa Kleypas. This is a historical romance, of course. Um, I absolutely adore this book so much I can see why it's Samantha's like all-time favorite book. It's also the first historical romance that I've read by Lisa Kleypas that I've given five stars. So if you want to hear more of my in-depth about that book definitely definitely check out that reading vlog because I discussed it quite a bit. Um, the next book that I can recall reading for that vlog was Strange Grace by Tessa Grattan. This is a very, very different book. It is a YA paranormal fantasy that features a polyamorous romance. And this book is quite polarizing among readers. You'll see on um, Goodreads, it has like an average rating of 3.5, which is not very good at all. I actually really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Um, yeah, it's it's a really interesting book. I would definitely recommend reading it for the spooky season. It's got all of the witchy vibes and um, there's like a devil-like character involved and like I said a polyamorous romance though the romance definitely is not the most important thing about the book. Um, then let me think. The next book that I recall reading, let's see, for that vlog, I have it right next to me, is Sugar Daddy by Lisa Kleypas. I had to buy myself a physical copy because that's how much I adored this book. So this is something quite a bit different from Lisa Kleypas. It's a women's fiction novel. It's not a romance novel, even though there is a romance in it. Um, and this is definitely a character driven book. It's really just about this woman, Liberty, and uh, her life. We see her from the time she's about, I want to say like 14 years old, to uh, adulthood. And it's just about her life. She starts out um, living in this really, really small town in Texas, and then she eventually makes her way to Houston. And uh, there is a romance in this. There actually ends up being kind of a love triangle and yeah uh, like I said definitely just check out that vlog if you want to hear more of my in-depth thoughts but I just loved Liberty the, uh, the main character so so much that's why I adored this book as much as I did I can't wait to read the other uh, three books I think that are in this series I also bought a copy of Blue-Eyed Devil which is right here because I've heard that it's even better than Sugar Daddy yeah it's just fantastic and then let's see the fourth and final book that I read for that vlog was Pool Boy 
by uh, Nikki Sloan. And I really enjoyed it. I gave it 4.5 stars. It wasn't quite a five star for me just because I didn't really like emotionally connect to the romance, but it's really great though. Nikki Sloan is quickly becoming one of my new favorite contemporary romance authors for sure. And uh, this is technically like book three in like a companion romance series, but I have not read books one and two yet, but I am really looking forward to doing that at some point in the future. So yeah, this one has the um, older woman, younger man trope. There's also this really cool connection that the two main characters have having to do with country music that I didn't expect at all. Like just judging by the cover and the title, you would think that this romance is a lot more basic than it actually is. But yeah, 4.5 stars. It was really, really good. All right, it is time to bake the under eye concealer. Um, so the next book that I want to talk about is With You Forever by Chloe Lee. This is the fourth book in her Bergman Brothers series. Um, I know that I was really, really excited about this book because I just loved the first three books in this series so far. And unfortunately, this one is my least favorite of the series so far. I hate saying that because these books are just so good and I love Chloe Lee. Yeah. Um, so this one is about Axel or Axel and Rooney and um, Axel is a character that I've been looking forward to his book for a while. He just seems like a very intriguing character. He's a grumpy hero. Um, he does have autism and then Rooney I think we met her in the previous book of the series and she has chronic illness which I thought that, that representation was really well done even though I don't have that chronic illness. I just really loved seeing that in a romance novel. Um, what else do I want to say? Their romance was really really sweet but I found the pacing to be slow at times and really like not much was happening plot wise. This is definitely a very 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 character driven book and I didn't I just didn't love these characters as much as I expected to. I really thought that I was going to be obsessed with them and their romance and I wasn't. So I still really enjoyed it. Gave it four stars. It just like wasn't my absolute favorite thing. Um, let's see. Next up, let's talk about Magic. Is it Magic Bites? Is that the title? Book one in the Kate Daniel series by Ilona Andrews. I have been dying to read this series for such a long time. And so for the most part, I liked this book. I think I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. Um, the world is really interesting, but I don't understand how the world works. And I think it's, you know, this is one of those series where you're just gonna have to keep reading books in the series to understand the world more and more. Um, but what I can tell you about the world so far, this is in the synopsis for the first book. So this is nothing spoilery by any means, um, is that we live in Atlanta. So this is an urban fantasy series, but it seems like we are living in a very distant future. And this is a world where either magic is working or technology is working at any one time. They can't coexist. So sometimes like electricity will be able to kick on and then magic can't work. There is no magic really. And then sometimes magic takes over and technology doesn't work, which I thought was just such a cool setup for an urban fantasy. Hey Daniels, I don't know how to quite how to describe her character, um, but she ends up investigating the murder of a friend of hers essentially and things go on from there. I gave this 3.5 stars though just because like the murder mystery itself it was kind of interesting, but it like wasn't the most interesting murder mystery that I've ever read, if I'm being honest. And then towards the end, there were like these battle scenes going on having to do with the murder mystery. And because I didn't care all that much about the murder mystery, then I didn't really care about the battle scenes. Um, I will say I'm interested in this series. Like I'm definitely going to continue on with it because there were some really cool characters introduced, especially Curran, who I'm pretty sure is Kate Daniels' love interest in the series. Um, and I've definitely heard that the series gets better. I've also heard that the series doesn't really start until book two. Um, I guess things don't really get going for the story until book two. So I'm definitely going to give this series another shot. White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson is a YA horror slash thriller novel. It was advertised as The Haunting of Hill House meets Get Out. I think that description is totally accurate. 
and I gave this four stars. I think it's so, so good. It's not my favorite thing that I've read from Tiffany D. Jackson, and I do not think it's the most innovative horror novel out there. However, it does what it does really, really well, and I would definitely recommend it. I think the only thing that got me is that the ending was like really, really abrupt. Um, I don't know and it just left a lot of questions and I think I would have been fine with that if that was if this was like an adult horror novel but with YA for some reason I expect more answers. I expect more of my questions to get answered I guess so yeah still still really good definitely would recommend it. The perfect book to read for this time of year because it is a haunted house story. Um, just to tell you I feel like I haven't been going into the plots of it any of these books and I am so sorry. Um, but this book definitely delves into issues such as gentr gentrification and mass incarceration of black people and it's about our main character and I cannot remember her name. You guys know I am terrible at remembering character names and I'm really really sorry about that. Um, but her and her family end up moving to this really small town and then weird things just start happening at this house that they've moved into. Basically her mom got this grant that they could live in this neighborhood that the government is trying to renovate um, and just make more attractive. And so you can kind of guess where the get out type plot is coming from. So yeah, just a really great YA horror thriller. Nothing more to say about that one. The next book that I read after that was Rock Paper Scissors by Alice Feeney. This is my first book that I've read by this author and it definitely will not be my last. I almost gave this five stars but I don't know for some reason for me personally like the last couple of chapters just like lost what I was loving about the book leading up to that. Um, but the plot of this is really cool. It's one of those like domestic thrillers. We have a married couple, can't remember names of course, um, and they decide as like a last ditch effort to save their marriage to go to this isolated cabin in Scotland. And what's really cool about the setting of this novel is that um, the it's like a bed and breakfast that they're going to stay in and it's like this creepy chapel that was turned into a bed and breakfast. So like it's got this really cool and eerie atmosphere to it for sure. Um, and so yeah basically the husband and wife are like hiding secrets from each other and they're hiding their motivations as to why they've agreed to go on this weekend getaway and the wife won this getaway mysteriously through work. So um, yeah you know things are about to go down for sure and they definitely definitely do. There were so many plot twists in this book. Oh my goodness. I um, was like gasping and my jaw was dropped at one point. There's like one huge plot twist in particular like halfway through the book that I was just like wow. <laughs> like totally totally blew me away. That doesn't always happen with mystery thrillers you know. Um, but yeah definitely after reading this book I definitely definitely want to read more from Alice Feeney. This was just really really great. All right next up is definitely one of my favorite books that I've read this year and that is The Darkness Outside Us by Elliot Schreffer. So my goodness was this book totally mismarketed and I'm just never gonna shut up about this book because I need this book to find its audience. It was marketed as just a YA space romance and while it is YA and while there is a romance in it, oh my goodness, this is so much more than a space romance. This is a space thriller and my goodness the plot twist you guys. Like it was just absolutely insane. We have um let's see our two main characters. I can't remember their names of course. We have Ambrose who is from one country because basically this is taking place in the distant future um, and the world is now left with two countries. I guess all the other countries fought wars and now they no longer exist. I don't know. Um, but I remember there's like the Federation and there's another country that sounds uh, very much like Russia. Um, and so we have one boy, they're both 17 years old. It's explained like early on in the book that they had to be both they both had to be age 17 for some reason, so it's YA. Um, but yeah, we have one boy from the Federation, one boy from the other country, and they have to collaborate on this space mission and things go wrong. And I'm not gonna say anything more, except that you just, you need to read this. You need to give it a chance. Um, I really hope that it finds its audience. I kind of wish that this was an adult novel. I think it would be 
more popular if it was marketed as an adult novel. I do love the cover and the cover definitely screams YA for sure. But yeah, I just, man, I just feel like this book was completely mismarketed and I need it to find its audience. So please, please read this book even if you think you hate YA or even if you think you hate space thrillers or anything like that. Like I just, I think there's something in this book for everybody. So please, please read it. All right, so the next book I wanna talk about is Teach Me by Olivia Dade. This is, I think technically book one in I think it's called There's Something About Marysburg. I think that's the name of the companion romance series. This is an indie published romance series that uh, Olivia Dade wrote well before writing Spoiler Alert, which is a traditionally published romance. And oh my god, I love this so much. I gave it five stars. Like Olivia Dade is quickly becoming one of my favorite um, romance authors. And one of the things I loved about this book is, um, first of all, it's a really quick read. I think the audiobook was only like seven hours or like eight hours, like really, really quick for a full length novel. And we have our main character, she's plus sized. And she is a teacher at this high school. I can't remember. I think it's a, pr a private high school, like an elite private high school, maybe. I don't know. And so, yeah, she's just loving her job. And yes, her love life isn't going great, but she's okay with that because her job is really awesome. Um, but then this new guy comes into town and uh, content warnings for like a toxic boss situation because um, our main character's boss, he's just really, really rude towards her in general. And I can't even remember why at this point. Like, is that ever even revealed? I'm sure it is. Um, but yeah, he hires this new teacher to come in and also teach honors history. And so um, her boss makes the new teacher take over some of her classes. And so she's really bummed and upset about that. And so at first she's kind of grumpy towards the new teacher. Um, also, I want to mention that Olivia Dade's novels, they tend to center around like older main characters. I think both main characters in this are either like in their 40s or like nearly in their 40s, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, this starts off as like a grumpy sunshine type of romance for sure um, with the heroine being the grump and the hero being the sunshine character. The hero is divorced and he has a daughter who is is one of the heroine students. So yeah, I just looked it up and Rose and Martin were the were their names of the main characters. Um, but yeah, I also really loved that Martin the hero fell for Rose first. I always love romance novels like that. Um, and I just loved that Martin was just such a sweetie pie, such a sweet man. I love sweet cinnamon roll heroes and he gave me butterflies multiple times while reading this so yeah that's enough about that book <laughs> let's move on to ace of spades oh my goodness by farida abike yimide i'm pretty sure that is how the author's name is pronounced because i've looked it up before um so this was advertised as the ya version of gossip girl meets get out and both main characters are queer and we love to see that this is definitely those two things gossip girl meets get out um, we have our two main characters. Oh, uh, Kiyamaka, I think was the, yeah, we have Devon and Kiyamaka. They go to this really elite private school called Nivius. This definitely gives me dark academia vibes. One day this character, I think the character's just called Ace, um, just starts sending out texts to the whole student body. Very, very, very Gossip Girl X-esque, but these texts are only about Devon and Kiyamaka, who are the only two black students in the school. So, um, you know, the plot thickens as it were. And yeah, this was really freaking fantastic. I gave it five stars. Uh, definitely, definitely one of the best YA novels that I've read this year. It's one of those books that you just can't stop reading because the drama and the tea is so good and it may not be the most like fast paced book out there, but the buildup is so worth it. Um, yeah, I just think that everything about this book was just really, really well done. I cannot wait to see what this author comes out with next. I will say that I low key wanted this book to be a series and not a standalone because that's how good it was. Like that's how good the vibe was. And I could totally see a story like this becoming a series, but at the same time, I see why it's a standalone, um, especially with the way like the ending is, like it, it has its own complete story arc and all of that. All right, so next up is The Arrangement. I, who's the author? It's like 
Kirsten Modlin. This is an indie published mystery thriller and for a very good reason. This is not a very good book. I will say that up front. I think I gave this, how many stars did I give this? Like three and upon reflection I think I should give it two. It's, it's really not not good. Uh, I will say there's plenty of plot twists, but they're not necessarily good plot twists. Um, we are centering on a married couple and they decide to start having an open marriage, an open relationship, and they have like a designated day of the week where they can go out on dates with other people. And their rule um, for this whole thing working is that they can't talk to their spouse about the date afterwards or before or anything like that like that. So these dates are like completely in secret, which of course is very toxic, my goodness. So yeah, things go on from there. I am going to spoil this book a little bit because this it turns into one of those thrillers that are so not my favorite. Um, those kind of thrillers where it's like the married couple ends up like accidentally murdering somebody or maybe not so accidentally. And then the whole rest of the novel is about them trying to cover up said murder. Like that's just not my favorite kind of mystery thriller. So that alone makes me not want to recommend it. Um, but also there were just so many like dumb plot twists. Like this book was stupid, honestly, truly. And I, I don't like saying that by any means. I, I, I hate saying that an author's work is stupid, but just like the kinds of plot twists that she would use, like just, just not smart. All right. So next up we have The Redemption by Nikki Sloan. This is the fourth and latest installment in her Filthy Rich American series. And I was so excited going into this book. I feel like I keep saying that for every book <laughs> that I'm talking about. Um, but I was so pumped about this book because this was going to be McAllister's redemption arc. As you can tell by the title, McAllister is the sort of kind of antagonist of the first three books of the series. And so we were finally getting his book and his romance with Sophia, I believe is the main character's name. And this one, she was, yes, yeah, Sophia, she was a featured character in the first three books. And I was just so excited about this, even though I'm usually not that excited about really big age gap romances, because there's like 30 years between these two characters. I did not even care because I knew before starting this book that these two characters were just beyond perfect for each other. And they really, really were. I gave this five stars. Oh, man, this was just absolutely fantastic. I adore the way that Nikki Sloan redeemed this character for us, for the readers. Like it was just perfectly, perfectly done. It just fit in so well with the rest of the series. I cannot recommend it enough. Y'all, I swear Lash Paradise Mascara by um, L'Oreal is the best drugstore mascara out there. It is absolutely fantastic. Okay, so now that we're done with that, I need to move on to eyebrows. All right, and I'm going to move on to talking about the Four Psychos or the Dark Side series by Christy Cunning. I binged all four of these books uh, this past month, and I enjoyed this series for the most part. Unfortunately, I think it went downhill as it went along. I loved books one and two. And three and four, unfortunately, did disappoint me a bit, like oopsie whoopsie. Um, but let me just explain a little bit about this plot. I think the less you know going into it, however, the more you'll enjoy it for sure. Um, but we have a heroine who's a ghost and she has been watching these four men for the past like five years of her existence. She just like blipped into existence one day as a ghost. And she's just been watching these four men as they live their lives and kind of like slowly falling in love with them. And one day, um, the four men, they are demon slayers, by the way, the four men um, get attacked in their sleep. And so she suddenly becomes corporeal and um, defends them and kills the people that are trying to kill them. And so then they can see her. Yeah, the third book I gave like 3.5 stars. And then the fourth book I gave three stars. I think the fourth book in particular, I really didn't like where the plot was going. Like I just like didn't really care. Um, but I really liked how, like in book two, we learn a lot about who our heroine is. She is like a nameless heroine in the first book and then who these four men are to her. Like there's a really significant relationship between these five people and that 
is really, really cool. Um, and there's like trials involved. Um, yeah, I don't know. This, this series for me, unfortunately, just like went downhill. It is what it is. Um, you know, I, I still recommend it though, because I just think that it's such a cool concept. Like, especially if when you read, um, book two, like you'll really see, um, just how cool of a series this really is. Like it's such a unique concept and everything, but yeah, it just, unfortunately, it just did not really pan out for me the way that I wanted it to. All right, last but certainly not least for September, I read The Royals Next Door by Karina Halley. Oh my goodness. I should have realized going into this that I was going to absolutely adore it because it's Karina Halley. Everything I've read by Karina Halley has just been phenomenal. What was really exciting about this book in particular is that it is a traditionally published book. I believe Berkeley published this and that's just so exciting because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first traditionally published book from Karina Halley. She usually indie publishes her books and this was more of a rom-com though definitely go into this knowing that there's a lot of depth and there are um some dark themes going on in this book we have our main character piper i love her so much she has a romance podcast and she is also a school teacher and then we have harrison who is a bodyguard because as the title implies um a prince and princess move into the house next door like the prince is from the uk and he marries uh a singer and their characters are definitely very reminiscent of Harry, Prince Harry, and Meghan Markle, for sure. So yeah, we have Harrison, our hero, who is their bodyguard. And this definitely, it doesn't, it's not hate to love or like enemies to lovers, but like they definitely, Piper and Harrison definitely don't like each other at first because Harrison is just so grumpy and stoic and Piper is so not that. All right, sorry about that. I had to go apply my lipstick off camera because it's very dark and I didn't want to mess up. But last few things I will say about The Royals Next Door by Karina Halley is that I loved Piper. I found her to be a deeply relatable character to me personally. Like just things about her personality are just so me. And Harrison, you know, he's one of those like stoic grumpy heroes that ends up being the sweetest of cinnamon rolls and he's a baker and it was just everything. So gave this five stars. I'm really looking forward to reading more books in this series. I know that there's definitely a second book planned at least. That's going to be it for this Get Ready With Me slash end of September wrap up. I hope that you enjoyed. I sincerely hope that this video comes out looking okay. I've never tried to film myself doing my full face of makeup, you know, while talking about books to you guys. Like this is definitely something very different for me, but I had a fun time with it and I hope that you guys did too. So with that being said, I would love it if you would leave a comment down below if you want to discuss any of the books that I talked about in this video or if you want to give me recommendations or anything like that. And I would also love it if you would leave a like and subscribe. And I thank you so much in advance if you do. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!